Hi, I'm Carl, and welcome back to my YouTube video series on rotary tools. And we have this cheap little Drillmaster Harbor Freight rotary tool here. This is the one that's, when you get them on sale, they're around seven or eight dollars. Normal prices, are, I believe, is like eleven ninety nine, twelve ninety nine, something like that. I don't quite remember. But anyway, whatever the price is, here it is. And it comes with these accessories. Now, I'll admit that I've already opened this and used it one time when I did my unboxing review. And haven't touched it since. And what we're going to do today, we're going to talk about this just a little bit. And... Uh, then we're going to do a little cutting with it. So, this thing right here has a voltage 12 volt DC RPM 16,000. You see the size of it right here. And I'm going to plug it in and let you hear how loud it is. There we go one speed that's all and it does vibrate of course more at this end than this end but this feels like you know like a electric razor about that type of vibration let me go ahead and unplug it here you can see how big around it is it's about as big as round as a half dollar silver dollar or so and i know I had the instruction manual for it, but I must have lost it somewhere along the line. Comes with these polishing pads right here, a couple of sanding mandrels and sanding drums, and here's some more drums, a couple of drill bits, a brass wire brush, a steel wire brush, uh, some cutoff discs in here. And it has a tube full of miscellaneous grinding, sharpening, shaping, etching, whatever you want to call them, bits. And it has these bits right here that come with it. The pink grinding stones. There we go. There's a close-up of those. And in here it has the uh, straight nylon bristle brush. You see the different shapes on these. This one is very uh, stands out more than any of them. But I don't expect a whole lot of quality out of these. We're going to take one of these out in a few minutes and, and grind something. I'll, I'll explain what we're going to do in just a second. Uh, it also comes with this sh shaping sh shape shapening <laughs> shapening. That's not a word, is it? It shapes the contours of your disc right here. So if these come out of square, out of round, whatever, you can reshape it with this. I have a video on that also. What we're going to do in this video is, many of you might know or might even be in the hobby of Hot Wheel cars modifying, repainting, putting new wheels on, uh, morphing them out, put two or three bodies together and make a really zombie type apocalypse car. Several different things you can do. And let's start at this one. This is a Daytona 300C from Ma Maisto. 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 However you want to say that. I call it Maisto. So what we're going to do is we're going to, I've already taken it apart, so here's the bottom chassis. So there's not much to the inside of this one. What we're going to do in this project is see if we can actually cut this car with these cutoff wheels with this tool. To see if it actually can be used in the hot wheel modifying hobby. 
So, here is the disc that holds the cutoff wheel. The disc. Here is the mandrel that holds the cutoff wheels. We're going to go ahead and pop this open and get this loaded up. Okay, I got one disc here. I'm going to put that down. And if you'll notice on here, I know it's going to be hard to see, but this comes with two little red washers when you take the screw out. For me, it's kind of hard to keep a hold of. So, there's a red washer on the screw and red washer in the palm of my hand. So, we're going to make sure we're loading this right. Okay, the red washer. I have the cutting disc. Putting this other red washer on. This thing is really tiny. So, there we go. And then we are going to screw it onto this mandrel right here. And I'm holding it hand tight right now. So I'm going to tighten that up. You'll see you have the washer on this side and the washer on this side. Now I'm stressing this just to show you that I'm doing it the correct way of loading this up. Okay, here's the tool itself. I'm going to load it into the proper size collet, which was already installed in here. I'm going to push down this lock button. There we go, here's that. I'm going to turn this tightening nut right here. There we go. Let me put on my... Always wear your safety glasses when you're working with a rotary tool. Now, does it bug you? I don't know why it bugs me when people call every rotary tool a Dremel. I know it's not really a big deal, but I don't know. It's just something that gets under my skin when people call this a Dremel. Uh, people call the the uh, Hyper Tough, they call that a Dremel. Dremel's a brand name. It's not the actual type of tool. So these are r rotary tools. And this is Drill Master Rotary Tool. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and plug this in. Turn this on. There we go. What we're going to do with this first part of this project is we're going to cut the top off of this. Let me zoom in a little bit. There we go. We're going to see how long it takes to cut the top off of this car. by cutting this right here and this right here. We're going to do this live feed and I'm not going to speed up the the cutting in the video. So, I mean in, in the editing we're not going to speed it up. This is going to be actual live speed. Here we go. We'll start right here. It is cutting. Come back this way a little bit. I'm pushing down maybe a little bit too hard for this type of tool. Or this brand of tool. I'll put it that way. Whoops. Bogged down right there. There we go. I've cut through there, and let's go ahead and cut this one.
It's getting a little hot. Okay, you can see how long that took, so I'll cut through both of these posts. And now, I'm not going to use this car for anything else, I'm just going to cut this whole top off right here. Might as well do it right here. One more pillar. There we go. Now I did cut that off. I mean, I can pretty much guarantee that it took longer to cut than another rotary tool would have taken but it did cut it right we witnessed it so i'm going to oh let's do this let's see how much of that disc was eaten up during that process there we go here's the difference so as you can tell not much of that disc was eaten or used up. Let's go ahead and take this off. Get this wire bristle brush. Tighten it down. Whoops. This one's going to take a different mandrel. So Let's unscrew this, take, I mean, not a different mandrel, a different collet. So let's find the collet that's going to fit this one, possibly, possibly this one. Let's see if that works or if one of these other ones will work, work best. Let's use this one right here. So we're going to put this collet into here, put on the locking nut. I'm leaving it zoomed in so you'll know that no trickery trying to be done here. Okay. Now, will this wire brush be strong enough to take off some of this primer that's on here? Just give that a shot and see what happens. Look at the run out. Turn this off. And because this is sticking out so much, it came out a little bit when it was running. So let me tighten that back up as much as I can with my finger. There we go. Let's try that again. So as you can see, it is taking off this primer with no issues at all. And again, you can see the run out on this tool, on this accessory. Not ideal, and the longer it runs, the more vibration it gets. Okay, so we know that will work. 
So the final test we're going to do on this is we're going to take one of these bits. Let's just grab one of them that's squared off on the end. Let's see here. Look at this one. This one's supposed to be, there we go, diamond coated. I don't think it has any coating on there. I think it's just smooth metal, stainless steel. Um, let's see here. Let's try this one. Will it fit in that color? There we go. It does fit in this collet, and we're going to tighten this thing up as much as we can. And with this, we're going to see if we can possibly smooth this out a little bit. There's a sharp edge right here. I'm not expecting this to do much, but we're going to try it anyway. Slipping right out. Ah, loosen that up. It's not being held too well in that mandrel. I mean, I keep saying mandrel. In that collet. And that's the collet that is supposed to match up to it. Yep. This is the closest one. Let me try that again. Push it in all the way and bring it out just a little bit, sixteenth of an inch or so. Tighten that back up. Now let's try this again. Let's, that is smoother though. Sorry about that folks, that my SD card became full and shut off and I had to put a new card in. So, I was showing that it was, this can grind, barely, I don't think there's any diamond left on here. Let me see if I can find another one in the stack here and use it instead. This, okay, I'm going to use this one, right here, take this one out, which is basically useless now. So, I might as well just go ahead and toss it before it gets mixed up with anything else. Okay, this is the one that we just used. Yep, that's perfectly smooth. Garbage. Okay. Let's see if we can finish smoothing this out. Well, let's go to this side now. This little... Well, see this door handle? Let's see. See the door handle? Let's see if we can get that door handle off there. There we go. Boy, look at that. Run out on that thing is horrible. Give this a shot again. It is coming out. Let me tighten it up again. There we go. It is working, but it's not working great. Let's see here. Look at 
Let's do this. See the door where the doors are right there? The, the line? Let's see here. Thing about to come out again. Okay. The reason of this testing is to see if this tool. Let me zoom back out because we're not going to do any more cutting or grinding. The reason of this test is to see if this tool can be used in the 164th die cast car restoration hobby and although it might not be fun to use it, you might have to adjust this tool a lot during use and you might go through a lot of accessory bits but it can be used if you're on a tight budget you can't really afford a, the more expensive rotary tool. I would tell you to save up and buy a better quality one. Even one from eBay for 20 bucks. This full size rotary tool would be better than this. I have purchased rotary tools with accessories and a flex shaft for under $25 off eBay or Amazon. But in a pinch this will work it might get you out of a awkward situation sometime I don't know it's not ideal it's not pretty and I sure wouldn't brag about it to my friends but <laughs> this drill bat master might just work for you in this hobby Give me your thoughts. Tell me what you think. If you've ever tried to use this in the hobby, let me know. Or, if you think I'm just wasting my time on this video, let me know too. I don't care. Just leave me some kind of comment. Let me know that you um, agree or disagree. My name is Carl. And I do appreciate you watching this short video on Drillmaster $10 Rotary Tool.